to welcome you to our Black History Program. Uh, today, our theme for today is one of unity. We the people, uh, all of us, a dream for all of us. Please be respectful of our presenters and be a good listener as to not talk during the presentations. At the conclusion of our program, we will dismiss you. I'd like to present to you uh, our Mistress of Ceremonies, Miss Crystal Nixon. But before Crystal comes, I'd like for us to welcome our pianist, Mr. Jackson uh, Borges. Uh, and he's brought some uh, of his choir with him. Um, we will open our program this afternoon by asking all of you to stand and join into uh, singing Lift Every Voice and Sing. So would you please stand? My name is Krista Nixon, and I'm a senior here at CAPE. Black History Month, or National African American History Month, is an annual celebration of achievements by black Americans and a time for recognizing the central role of African Americans in US history. Black History Month began in 1915, 50 years after the 13th Amendment abolished slavery in the United States. The event grew out of Negro History Week, and since 1976, every U.S. president has officially designated the month of February as National Black History Month. Other countries around the world, including Canada and the United Kingdom, also devote a month to celebrating black history. Today, we're going to celebrate unity and the talented African Americans who left their mark on U.S. history throughout their, through their writings, songs, and poems. Enjoy the show. My name is Jojo Kirby, and I'm a freshman here at Cape. African American spirituals were originally created by slaves in the United States. These songs were generally Christian in nature and sung to boost morale, to protest, or for slaves to communicate with each other secretly while on the Underground Railroad. Today, the musical tradition is kept alive best through choral music.
I'm Tamia Bonville and I'm a junior. Having been kidnapped from West Africa at the age of seven and chained to a slaving vessel named the Phyllis, Phyllis Wheatley arrived in the US in 1761 and was sold as a slave to the Wheatleys, a Boston family. The Wheatley's daughter taught Phyllis how to read and write English and eventually she published a book of poetry which was received with high acclaim. Poems on various subjects is a landmark achievement in US history. Published in 1773, just before the Revolutionary War, Wheatley became the first African-American and first U.S. slave to publish a book of poems as well as the third American woman to do so. Phyllis Wheatley died December 5, 1784, at the age of 30. On being brought from Africa to America, a poem by Phyllis Wheatley. Twas mercy brought from me from my page and land, taught my benighted soul to understand that there's a God, that there's a Savior too. Once I redemption neither sought nor knew, some view our sable race with scornful eye. Their color is a diabolic dye. Remember, Christians, Negroes, black as cane, may be refined and join the angelic train. Hi. I'm Byron Civils. Um, the Cape and Hope and Gospel Choir started last year around this time in February. So we're gonna perform today and yeah, we hope that you and um, <laughs> we hope that you enjoy. The splendor of a king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice trembles at his voice Yes, I'm gonna praise you. Oh, I lift my hand to give you glory. I lift my hand to give you praise. I praise you, Lord. 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 I
praise you. Yes, I'm gonna praise you. My name is Jason Lopez, and I am a senior at Cape and Lippin High School, and today I'll be reading about Sojourner Truth. Sojourner Truth was born in slavery around 1797 on a Dutch farm in Swarco, New York. She had at least 10 brothers and sisters, but she didn't get to know all of them. Slave owners would sell children just like property. One day she would be playing with her brother or sister in the yard. The next day they would be gone. When Sojourner turned nine, she was sold to a farmer named John Neely. Sojourner only knew how to speak Dutch and this angered Englishman, John Neely. He beat her often because she would not follow orders. Sojourner was smart, however, and soon learned English just by listening to others talk. She was, she was sold several times. Her fourth and final owner was John Darmouth, who was the state of New York. Her fourth and final owner was John, excuse me. Truth went on to, Truth went on to work on, with a, 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 mm. <laughs> abolitionists to bring slavery to an end throughout all of the United States. She also believed in women's rights and basic civil rights of all people. So Jordan traveled the country telling people what it's like to be a slave. She was an excellent speaker and when she told her story, and explain how slaves were treated, people were moved. Sojourner once met with President Abraham Lincoln and told him the story of her life as a slave. The Mars Rover built by NASA was named Sojourner after her. She once said, truth is powerful and it prevails. Sojourner Truth died November 26, 1883 at the age of 86. Um, my sisters and I, Danae, Heaven and Angel, will be reading The Grace and the Prejudice Against Color by Sojourner Truth. Children, who made your skin white? Was it not God? Who made mine black? Was it not the same God? Am I to blame, therefore, because my skin is black? Does it not cast a reproach on our maker to despite a part of his children because he has been pleased to give them a black skin? Indeed, children, it does and your teachers ought to tell you so. And root up, if possible, the great sins of prejudice against color from our minds. All children must know that if they go to heaven, they must go there without their prejudice against color. For in heaven, black and white are one in the love of Jesus. Amen. Now children, remember what Sojourner Truth has told you, and thus get rid of your prejudice and learn to love colored children, that you may be all the children of your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Langston Hughes wrote, The Negro Speaks of Rivers while on a train ride to Mexico, where he would live with his father for one year. He had just graduated from high school in Cleveland, Ohio, making him a mere 18 years old. The poem was published in Crisis Magazine in 1921, a year after he wrote it. When his train crossed the Mississippi River, Hughes was inspired by its beauty and was also reminded of its role in sustaining slavery in America. The sun was setting and Hughes had a long journey ahead of him. He took out a letter his father had written him and wrote this poem on the back of its pages. The poem, The Negro Speaks of Rivers, connects the soul and heritage of the African American community to four great rivers in the Middle East, Africa, and America. In this way, the poem charts the journey of African and African Americans and links this community to the birth of civilization. The speaker tells a tale of freedom and enslavement that his people have endured, and it heralds their wisdom and strength. Langston Hughes died in 1967 at the age of 65. The Negro Speaks of Rivers. 
I've known rivers, I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood and human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient dusky rivers. My soul grown deep like the rivers. A river is regarded as a symbol of life, ever flowing, moving, tossing, and turning. It is no surprise that poems and songs derived during times of prejudice have included verses about rivers. Old Man River is from the musical Showboat. <clears throat> Colored folks work on the Mississippi. Colored folks work while the white folks play. Pulling those bows from the dawn till sunset. Getting no rest till the judgment day. Old man river. That old man river, he must know something, but don't say nothing. He just keeps rolling, he keeps on rolling along. He don't plant tater, he don't plant cotton, and them that plant some is soon forgotten. But old man river, he just keeps rolling along. You and me, we sweat and strain, body all aching and rack with pain. Tote that barge, lift that bell, get a little drunk and you land in jail. Ooh. I get weary and sick of trying. I'm tired of living and scared of dying. But old man river, he just keeps rolling I'm Anna Janowski and I'm a senior. Maya Angelou is known for her 1969 memoir, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, which made a literary history as the first nonfiction bestseller by an African-American woman. Angelou was also the first African-American woman to have a screenplay produced. She was nominated for a Tony Award for her 1973 play, Look Away and an Emmy Award for her supporting role in the 1977 te television miniseries, Roots. Martin Luther King Jr., a close friend of Ange Angelo's, was assassinated on her birthday, April 4, 1968. Angelo stopped celebrating her birthday for years afterward and sent flowers to King's widow, Coretta Scott King, for more than 30 years until Coretta's death in 2006. Maya Angelou died on May 
28, 2014, at the age of 86. In the poem Caged Bird, poet Maya Angelou describes the bird with clipped wings. Its feet have been tied, and it has been placed in a cage that prevents it from flying away. Despite its fear, the caged bird continues to sing of freedom. Hi, I'm Trinity Kelly, a freshman here at Cape, and I'll be reciting the poem Caged Bird by Maya Angelou. The free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends and dips his wings in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky. But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of the things unknown but long for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill for the caged bird sings of freedom. The free bird thinks of another breeze and the trade winds saw through the sighing trees. And the fat worm's waiting on a dawn bright lawn and he names the sky his own. But a caged bird stands on the grave of dreams. His shadow shouts on a nightmare scream. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with fearful trill of things unknown but long for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill for the caged bird sings of freedom. African American spirituals paved the way for blues, jazz, and gospel, three genres that are distinctly American. The St. Louis blues is one of the most well-known blues songs. The song was most famous by Bessie Smith and Louis Armstrong. I had to see the evening sun go down. I hate to see the evening sun go down Cause my man, he's gone and left this town
we can write the book hey, said that be the love I want to rock with you all night dance until the sunrise I want to rock with you all night dance the night away Tonight 
My name is Aaron Burton, and I'm going to tell you a little about Martin Luther King. Dr. Martin Luther King was a civil rights activist in the 1950s and the 1960s. He led nonviolent protests to fight for all rights of all people, including Ameri African Americans. He hoped that America could be a colorblind society where race would not impact a person's civil rights. He is considered one of the greatest speakers of modern times. His speeches still inspire many to this day. Martin Luther King skipped two grades in high school, ninth grade and 11th grade. He entered Morehouse. Morehouse College at the age of 15 in 1944. By 19, he received a bachelor's degree in sociology. On April 4th, 1968, he was shot and killed in Memphis, Tennessee. Today, over 700 streets in the United States are named after Martin Luther King Jr. There is one such street in every major city with his name on it. George Washington is the only other American to have his birthday observed as a national holiday. Martin Luther King Jr. inspired the human race to strive for harmony among all people. His tragic death shocked the nation, but his words still, uh, his words, <laughs> and his words dedicate to equality to continue, to continue to inspire the younger generation still today. Here are some words of wisdom from Dr. King.
we won't just stand here in silence Can't stop the fire from rising, rising Oh, oh. People, don't you be afraid So many innocent slain This is an era for change, change And Malcolm's probably turning in his grave Every shade was beautifully made Colorful future, my skin don't define any human. Stars are the only thing shooting, shooting. Oh, Lord. As we bury the child, how can we sit there and hide? Change comes, we all take a stand now, stand now. And Martin speaks still echoes in my brain. Every shade was beautifully made and powerful. So much strength in you and me. Powerful. Breath away from victory. I matter, you matter, we matter. Oh, I matter, you I think first of all we need to uh, give all your classmates who were involved in this program a big round of applause. <laughs> Our guest pianist today is Mr. Jackson Borges and his some choir members from the parish of um, St. George's, uh, I think it says for itself what type of musician he is, and I think we need to give him a round of applause as well. Now, there are some people within our school that were very involved in this program, and hold your applause, but I certainly want them to stand and be acknowledged. Mrs. Springfield, Ms. Senegren, uh, Mr. LeBou, uh, Dr. Amy Weist, and Charlotte King, I think, have left, and they were from our community, uh, Mr. Kevin Brown, and Mr. E.J. Waters. Let's give them all a hand. Yeah. 
At, at this point in time, I'd like for all of you to stand and join in with We Shall Overcome. You have been a most wonderful audience. At this point in time, we ask that you please report back to seven period.